Hello everyone. Today we will uh, analyze this problem. This is a problem from, we can say it's from differential calculus. We don't require more knowledge than a average differential calculus course for solving it. So the problem uh, is taken from the IMC from the past year. This is the International Mathematical Competition for University Students. And the problem says the following. We have let F and G functions that goes from reals to reals be continuous functions such that G is differentiable. Assume that F0 minus G uh, derivated and evaluated by in zero multiplied by G derivated and evaluated in one minus F evaluated in one in the product is bigger than zero. Show that there exists a point C that belongs to zero one to the interval zero one such that F in evaluating C is equal to G derivated in C. So what is this problem? So how can we identify what we what we do require? So let me take this function. This is the most interesting condition. So this is the key point that we require to to analyze further. So here we have that there is a product which is bigger than zero. So we have here a function, like a structure function, like we will see like w zero. And what is w? w x is equal to f x minus the derivative of g evaluated in x. Okay, as you can see, w of 1 is equal, of course, of f1 minus the derivative of g evaluated in 1. Or the same that minus the derivative of g evaluated in 1 minus f1. So, this equation, I will put equation 1 can be written in the following form. It can be W of zero, W of zero, multiplied by minus W of one. This is bigger than zero. But we have that W of zero, W of one is less than zero. Okay. So here I just put the minus and it changed the direction of the inequality. So this is our main point. This result. So we have this condition. Also, we know the Wx is Fx minus the derivative of G in X. So fx by hypothesis is a continuous function and g of x is a differentiable function so its derivative must be continuous as well. So fx and the derivative of g are continuous functions. So remember that continuous can be, can be represented by capital C and uh, power zero. So, and we know from differential calculus that two functions that are continuous, their, their sum and their difference and their product are continuous as well. So it means that Wx must be continuous too. So this is the point. We will suppose, remember this, without Without loss of without loss of loss of generality, we will suppose that W zero must be 
bigger than zero, which implies that W1 is less than zero. I say without loss of generality because if we have uh, the other condition, the other condition is that W0 evaluating zero is less than one, than zero, sorry. And we will have the same result that we will show next. So remember that we will write it by WLG. Okay, so we assume this. Then we will have the following chain of inequalities. So W0, sorry, W1 is less than zero, is less than W0. Okay, so what do we know from the Bolzano theorem? So if we will recall the Bolzano theorem. So Bolzano theorem uh, is an important theorem from differential calculus that asserts that if we have f as a continuous function in A and B and if A is less than U, less than FB, then exists C that belongs to A to the interval, close interval A and B, such that FC is equal to U. Okay, so here we can consider a new function as minus Wx. So we know that this is minus W0 and we have this too. This is minus W1. So our old inequality W1 less than zero, less than W0, it's equivalent to zero minus of one. Okay, so, and of course, minus Wx is a continuous function as well. So, Bolzano theorem will be, we can apply Bolzano theorem in this situation too. Okay, so what does it mean? If we know, then we know, we know that x in that x is a continuous function. It means from Bolzano theorem. What we will have by Bolzano theorem? We will have that exist C that belongs to zero one such that the function that we have defined previously such that sorry such that evaluated in C is equal to zero. Okay, what does it mean? It means that minus WC is equal to zero. But this is the same that WC is equal to zero. Okay, now let's take this last statement. So WC is equal to zero for C, uh, we don't know which value of C, but we know it exists. And the existence is guaranteed by the Bolzano theorem. For C that belongs to zero, one, the interval is closed. So remember that WC is Fx minus G derivated in X. So WX, I will just recall here. So we will have that 
wc equal to zero and this is the same that fc minus the derivative of g evaluated in c and uh, let's take this last part that is the most important part this one and then we will deduce that the derivative of g in c must be equal to fc for a c or at least at least at, at least one for a value of c in c in the interval the closed interval from zero to one so remember what is that we require to do? We require to show that there exists a point C in zero and one such that FC must be equal to the derivative of G in C. And we have proved the existence of this point. What is the difference between the statement and our conclusion? That of course we in the in the problem there is a stated on open interval and here we found a close interval this is no problem because uh, why does it why does it have a meaning because we know that w of 0 and w of 1 cannot be 0 yes so anyways c belongs if if c belongs to the uh, open interval 0 to 1 then it belongs as well to to the closed interval from 0 to 1 it doesn't make any problem in the existence of C. And with this, of course, this value doesn't need to be unique. They are, it's possible that there are other values for C, but we don't know if there are more values. We only can conclude from the Bolzano theorem and the hypothesis of the problem that at least exists one value of C uh, that fulfills the condition of the problem. So today we have analyzed an interesting problem in differential calculus. As you can see, it doesn't require so much knowledge about uh, real analysis or anything. It can be solved with uh, simple tools. And uh, also it shows how to attack a problem of existence. Hmm? And it shows how to use the Bolzano theorem to prove the existence of a point that fulfills some conditions derived from the continuity of the functions. So if you have any suggestion about an, another approach that can be uh, amazing or can be interesting, so please let us know. We will be looking forward for your alternative solutions. So thank you so much for watching. Have a, new day, a, new, a nice day to everybody.